In September 2015, global leaders agreed on a new set of global development goals, the Sustainable Development Goals, which set ambitious targets for improving health and ending poverty. On the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly, the Global Health Technologies Coalition asked experts, what can we do to accelerate health innovation towards achieving the SDGs? As an advocate, I'm a huge believer in setting very um, uh, ambitious goals. And I think we have examples in the world of targets that mattered. Um, but targets and goals don't end. That's the beginning. Um, once you have these goals and targets, it's where's the resources to make things happen. Innovation takes time. Let's not be, uh, let, let's be clear about it. Innovation takes time. In order to get a product from the initial idea through all the product development, the research, through clinical trials, through market development, into the markets and available to women, men and young people takes a lot of time. So we need to invest. We need to invest in the long term and make sure that we've got the resources and the people and the partnerships that we're going to need to sustain these efforts over a number of years, but always with that end point in mind that we're seeking to get products to people. So number one, we need resources. Number two, we need to spend those resources much more wisely than ever. Um, and third, we need to be sure that in the midst of setting these long-term goals, that we do develop some relatively short-term milestones. I think we need to start to make R&D a part of the answer that people go to in terms of figuring out how to end the world's greatest challenges. To achieve the new global goals, we need partnerships. Partnerships between government, business, private sector, and civil society. The world is far too complicated just for governments to do the trick, nor can business do it alone. We need to come together. And the area of health is one of the areas where we have been fairly successful in bringing business, government, and civil society together, but we need to do a lot more. The U.S. government continues to play a critical role in sourcing innovation. We have, uh, we are one of, uh, we are a, a big investor in global health R&D across the U.S. government. Uh, USAID invests in close to $200 million in global health R&D, and we invest in a variety of different ways through grand challenges, through product development partnerships, even directly in innovation. So we need to continue to have a variety of ways that we source and invest in innovations. I think one of the things that we're going to have to look for over the next 10 years is what are going to be the financial instruments to promote innovation because it's clear that from our, that our technical capacity has outpaced our social political and financial instruments that we have to get these vaccines actually developed uh, and, and given to the people who need them so we need as much innovation on the social science side, on the economic side, as we do uh, on the science side. The scientists, it means we can't just talk to other scientists. We have to talk to the economists. We have to talk to the political scientists. We have to talk to our elected leaders. We even have to talk to some of our non-elected leaders uh, and, and really work with them to advance those innovations. We really need to be really working with communities a lot better. Um, we need to really be engaging with communities who really understand the complexities of the issues um, that people are facing. Innovations are no longer just occurring in the lab with the white-coated scientists. Innovations are occurring everywhere in the world, across disciplines, at all levels, uh, in every geography. So one of the, the um, biggest opportunities is just to start surfacing these kind of exciting innovations. Need is not enough. That whole idea that if you build it, they will come uh, really doesn't apply to a lot of the innovations we're talking about. Uh, we have a lot of tremendous needs out there, but if we design a product that doesn't have a market that will ultimately buy it, we're never going to achieve that desired impact. So, so really that brings in the importance of making sure that, that uh, we understand that end user and understand that end market. When we think particularly about innovation and particularly about research and development, um, I, I really want us to begin to think as a community about R and D and D. It's about research and development and delivery. Um, and again, it gets at the heart of this, that we are not developing these new technologies for the fun of the science. We are developing them because people need them. We can't be afraid to fail. We need to take a cue from Silicon Valley uh, where we can't be afraid to invest in innovations 
that fail. And if we want to have that major transformational change, we need to invest in those game changers. We can't take the safe road and just invest in incremental steps forward.